Good morning. Counting will resume in the next hour in the Northern Ireland Assembly elections with an historic result potentially on the cards. Sinn Féin are on course to become the largest party at Stormont, the first time a Nationalist Party will lead the Assembly. With 47 seats chosen so far, Sinn Féin have 18 MLAs elected. The DUP have blamed their drop in support on the effect on trade caused by the Northern Ireland Protocol. How do you feel when you look at your son in the hospital bed? I just feel... Oh, I'd give anything to hear his voice at the minute. You know, I keep going back over old videos of just listening to his voice. It makes me quite emotional. Um, yeah, I miss him. I love being with him. It just looks like he's asleep, you know. He looks so angelic and peaceful and... He don't look any different apart from what, like, what he does when he's asleep. Obviously, he's got tubes and everything. And why, like, things going in, or whatever he's going in, his wrists and... But, yeah, he just, he just looks like Arch, but asleep. Judge Mr Justice Hayden told Archie's family he'd come to his conclusion with the most profound regret, but on the most compelling of evidence, saying it is obvious from the detail of the treatment that it is intrusive, burdensome and intensive. It serves only to protract his death whilst being unable to prolong his life. In three months, Archie's family have been to this court more than a dozen times and now they've got until Monday to ask if they can appeal today's decision. I think the stress and the pressure that has been put on me by the trust and the courts, I just, I find it shocking. It's, it's not fair, it's not right. Earlier reading out his ruling, the judge said, Archie's mother described him as a fighter and I have no doubt he was, but the fight is no longer in Archie's control. His mum says she won't give up. Charlie Frost, ITV News at the Royal Courts of Justice. Next, the serial killer Levi Belfield, who murdered Millie Dowler, has become engaged to a prison visitor. Belfield now plans to marry the woman in jail. The government says it's begun an urgent review to see if it can stop the wedding going ahead. Charlie Frost joins me now. Charlie, what more can you tell us about this? Well, yes, the Ministry of Justice has confirmed that Levi Belfield has applied to marry in prison, something that he would need permission from the governor of Franklin Prison in Durham to do, because that is where he is currently serving two whole life sentences. The first given to him after he was convicted of murdering 19-year-old Marsha McDonnell and 22-year-old Amelie Delagrange 14 years ago. Then later, when he was in prison, he was given the second after he was found guilty of murdering 13-year-old Millie Dowler. Now, under the Human Rights Act, he does have the right to apply to be married, but uh, the prison's minister, Victoria Atkins, has ordered an urgent review into whether the government can stop this marriage going ahead, with the Prime Minister's spokesperson saying this lunchtime that Boris Johnson is sickened and appalled by it. But at the moment, as I said earlier, it is currently up to the governor of that prison whether or not this marriage can go ahead. Charlie Frost, many thanks. Thank you. First, though, to Charlie Frost at the Old Bailey. Charlie, finally some closure for the family. Well, yes, after decades of uncertainty and anxiety over their brother's death, today two of Ricky's sisters stood in front of his murderer and told him of the pain he had caused their family. This was their opportunity to explain their loss. His older sister, Rebecca, struggling to speak through tears, described Ricky as her other half. Just two years between them, she says they did everything together and addressing Watson but not using using his name, she said, after all these years of living your life, you finally get your comeuppance and Ricky finally gets justice. But whilst Watson did look over at Rebecca while she was talking, he remained emotionless and he was emotionless as the judge sentenced him to life.
A cheeky boy with beautiful deep blue eyes, Ricky Neve was six years old when he became the victim of fantasist and sexual predator, 13-year-old James Watson. It was a private ceremony here at St Mary's Church today, but that doesn't mean this new city, his city, wasn't heavily involved. The local Sea Scouts stood so smartly and proudly in a guard of honour as the coffin arrived here at the church and then they lined the pathway again as the coffin left to the sound of Dame Vera Lynn's We'll Meet Again being sung. But for me, one of the most moving parts of today was outside Sir David's South End West constituency office in Lee. The coffin was brought there by horse and carriage and the street was absolutely packed. Floods of applause coming from his constituents as they said goodbye to the man they loved so much. Described as a hero of the House, he had ambitions of becoming the father of the House of Commons, the longest continuously serving Member of Parliament. But that ambition was brutally cut short. Those inside today, who worked alongside him every day, honouring his unwavering dedication to public service. You're behind. And with my very long journey now edging closer, I wanted to get some tips from these clued up cyclists. Hayley and I, behind the camera, we're training to do a 100 mile cycle race in a day. <laughs> so what would your advice be to us to, you know, be better cyclists and, and to get through that cycle ride? Well, I'd say just keep on practicing on your bike and I feel like you should definitely feel confident on your bike to do, be able to do it. What about you, Eddie? Have you got any tips for us about cycling? So about for cycling, well, 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 you basically need to stay fo focused. And instead of looking down on you, um, you just need to look at straight in front of you. It was in the last few miles that I really felt I may not make the finish. But with Laura and Hayley by my side, soon enough it was in sight. And it was amazing. <laughs> Never ever let me suggest anything ever again. <laughs> I know. You've been so busy and you've managed to get your training in. I honestly couldn't be happier. I think you're just brilliant. 100 miles, seven and a half hours in the saddle and a feeling of euphoria that's hard to beat. Oh, Charlie Johnson in the studio. Oh, my goodness, Charlie. I'm so full of admiration. You said you were soaring there. I was thinking more sore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you recovered? Oh, yeah, still a bit sore in yeah, places, yeah. but yeah. Fully booked throughout his first summer season, the hut is thriving. This beach hut, a simple structure by the sea, really is magic. In just three months, Ty has transformed it, not only into a successful business, but a place that lifts the weight off the shoulders of people who are often facing the most difficult of times. And it really is a joy to watch. Our reporter Charlie Frost is there for us now with, wow, a pretty good <laughs> view. Tell us exactly where you are, Charlie. Well, you join me reaching a new height above Clacton. I'm taking in these gorgeous North Sea views and I'm on one of two Ferris wheels specially installed to mark Clacton's 150th birthday. <laughs> to imagine Clacton's iconic coastline without the pier. But in the 1870s, these beaches were seen as the perfect business opportunity. A state-of-the-art seaside resort was created, and millions of us have been making memories here ever since. Welcome to TJ's Zoo. Modelled on his favourite, Colchester Zoo, it's even got its own Kingdom of the Wild enclosure, and we're just in time for a tour. The giraffes are really tall. They can even reach high branches, like that tree. With the cheeky chimp who stole a banana from my kitchen. And keeping cheeky chimps in check is something this five-year-old sees in his future. So would you like to be a zookeeper, TJ? Yes, I always dreamed about being it. And Colchester Zoo, why is it in trouble? Why does it need your help? Because, because it has a vile, 
virus around. And who was Captain Tom Moore? He's very old. Do you know what he did for charity or? He didn't so much lap so he could get money. He was the man who, despite his age, told us in our darkest times that tomorrow would be a good day. His optimism and determination, raising more than £30 million for NHS charities and also inspiring us to do our bit. Are you ready, guys? Big jump. <laughs> Every splash here at Shotley Primary School raising cash for Diabetes UK. Well, that's all from us now. We'll be back with more just after half past one. See you then.